I believe that our work to identify a, a methodology that could be followed by national programs and by many others around the world to, ha to look at and understand how core pieces of technology in the farming system interrelated one with another and how it complemented other farm activities. It's a little bit different than looking at whole farm farming systems. There are many programs like that, but we always took rice technology as the core piece of, un of technology that we wanted to understand. I believe the contribution of that, there were a couple of things that were very striking in the early days. One of them was that we discovered and were able eventually to uh, persuade our colleagues throughout the institute that uh, not always did rice technology considered alone uh, turn out to be the best approach. That was we were able to show that many times Erie technology as developed on the farm uh, might not be successful on farms because of the many other conditions that impinged on rice farming. For example, the, the real uh, value of an early rice variety, 1529, which was an early maturing rice variety uh, that was followed then later by IR36, uh, was not that it was higher yielding globally as a high yielding rice, but the fact that it matured early. So there was a sacrifice of yield for timeliness and that made rice fit much better into an entire farming system and enabled other crops to be grown in other seasons. Uh, Dr. Brady did recruit uh, what we would have to call uh, the Young Turks of the Institute of the time. We thought we were a relatively large multinational community of young scientists who uh, you know, didn't expect to stay at Erie forever. We, we, in fact, I think most of us thought that we were coming there for maybe two years, five years at the most. We most persisted for at least ten years. And uh, that particular generation uh, happened to have worked at Erie during a period when funding was, uh, was on the rise. So there was a tremendous esprit de corps, a tremendous uh, spirit of accomplishment. Uh, the flip side of it is that we were full of ourselves and were often up to tricks. Uh, there was uh, hardly a week passed that some uh, gimmick or some trick, some uh, mischievous act didn't take place on the compound of uh, the young scientists uh, uh, playing tricks on one another. Like, for example, walling up the doors to one's house with uh, river stones so that they couldn't leave their house the next morning, removing scaffolding from a building project to scaffold in another home overnight. Uh, sometimes uh, names to the houses were, uh, at first the uh, posts that, were, uh, that had the names of persons' houses were just stuck into the ground. Well, that was too easy to move. So those, every morning, people would wake up to find they were living in the wrong house or, or they had the wrong name in front of their house. Um, then they started setting them in the concrete. Um, and, but even those sometimes got somehow out of the ground and one ended up in the swimming pool. Uh, so there were, oh, there were antics galore among those scientists, but I would still, it was probably the, uh, one of the very best working environments one would ever want to be in, in terms of collegiality, uh, wherewithal to do research, uh, support for our research was tremendous.